Linux Mint 18.3, which is codenamed Sylvia, has just been released. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at some of the changes we can expect to see. So first off, the kernel and base operating system version. So we have Linux kernel 4.10.0, and it's based on Ubuntu 16.04.3. First off, one of the features that will be going is the KDE Desktop. This is the final release of Mint that will feature the KDE Desktop. Incidentally, in this video, I'm looking at the Cinnamon Desktop, and it is Cinnamon version 3.6. Linux Mint do provide an upgrade path to Mint 18.3 from earlier versions of Mint version 18, and quite frankly, I don't see a reason why not to, really. It's been perfectly stable so far from what I've seen. There are a few new features which we'll come on to, and but there is a method of manually installing here, which is provided in this blog page, and I'll leave a link to it in the video description. The software manager has been redesigned, so a nice fancy new look, kind of more reminiscent of the GNOME software center. So I can click on one of these applications, it takes me across to the preview of it, got a nice screenshot there, and we still have the application ratings and reviews. What I was a bit surprised about initially was discrepancies on the size of install to size of disk space required. Initially on Audacity, it was wildly out, but uh, let's take another look. Perhaps it has corrected itself after a couple of reboots. So comparing it to Synaptic Package Manager. Okay, yep, that's the additional changes. So to apply that one change, we're going to have 75 meg of extra space will be used and 18.7 will be downloaded. And that is actually corresponding quite nicely now. Another screenshot that was shared with me had the software manager as being under Synaptic. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I notice that Spotify is enabled in the system repositories. Yeah, disk space seems to be a bit under what I saw yesterday, which was about 700 meg yesterday. It's now 295, which seems a little bit more reasonable, although still quite chunky actually for all it is. Compatibility with Flatpak has also improved with this release. Although it's typical of Mint to go down Flatpak when Ubuntu went down Snap. It's deadly as Snap actually installed, so Snap D. No, it is not. However, you could install it and then install packages from Canonical's repository. Looking at Nemo File Manager, I was led to believe that GIFs would be animated in the preview screen, although I'm guessing it means preview of the application there. I've not managed to get it working at all, although the GIF itself is animated. Don't know on that one. But one change we can look at is the Z Text Editor, or XED, however you would like to pronounce that. There is now a minimap available on the right hand side, although you do have to enable this feature through Edit Preferences. And then at the bottom there it says Overview Map, display the Overview Map. So yes, you do have to enable that. Uh, it takes up quite a bit of space there, but it does give you a rough idea where you are in the document. I'm not quite sure what's gone on in the formatting of this though, because uh, yeah, that's not right. Why does it think there's a string? and comments. I'm, I'm not too sure what's gone on there. Viewing this file within Git and Kate seems to render perfectly fine, so it, I don't know what's gone on here with Zed, but yeah, it hasn't quite interpreted it correctly. Although when you get further towards the end of the file, I think it does pick up again and sort itself out. Kind of. Yeah, eventually. Oh, I think it's one of those quotes, isn't it? It gets confused with a single quote in a comment. So it's not really interpreted this file as a bash script, which it is. A new backup manager has been added with time shift. So this will create a snapshot of your operating system excluding the home folder. Well, it excludes the home folder by default, unless you specifically state that you want to add in the home folder. So you can have user home directories. You can choose different types of backups. So if you're using the Btree file system, you can use that feature. If you're using any other file system, which by default is extension 4 in Linux Mint Installer, you can use the rsync. What puzzled me though is I can't seem to get it working. Select snapshot, so I've got a secondary hard drive here on this system, although it's a virtual box, it does have two SATA hard drives allocated to it. So it says selected device does not have a Linux partition. Well, it's weird because it does, there's the backup drive, there's a test folder, um, yeah, that's actually writable, and it's an extension 4 drive, so I don't know what you want me to do there. Yeah, file system type, extension 3 slash extension 4. Well, it's extension 4. I don't have a problem like that when I'm using clone zitter, so... Using rsync, it would only back up what has been changed, so you'll effectively have one backup, 
that you refresh and add in new files and delete any old files that have been removed. It means your initial backup will be very long-winded, but then subsequent backups will be very quick. On the downside though, if something becomes corrupt or you delete something uh, a couple of backups ago, then it will be lost forever. On the plus side though, it's quick and easy. You can schedule how often you want the backup. As I mentioned, you can include users' home directories and you can exclude certain file types. I want to take a look at the login options now and one feature I should mention is the sudo password should be asked for less frequently. So there's more options now on the login window. So we've got options to change the theme. Quite a few different themes there we can choose from. A few different icon themes. Optional pictures. So on the user list, you can allow manual login, hide user list, either allow or disallow guest sessions. You can do an automatic login. A point that this would be useful on is a multi-user system or even a corporate environment logging into an LDAP server or Windows server. Under settings, you sometimes have options for numlock. I don't seem to though. And we do have options for HRDPI support, the high definition displays. And by default, that is automatic. So one feature of Cinnamon 3.6 is improved HRDPI support. Uh, taking a look at the desklets, so we can right click on the desktop and go to add desklets. The name I've seen this mentioned as is Cinnamon Spices, and it comes with a refined user interface. Oh, just an example, we could just download the desktop calculator and go across to manage and add it to the desktop. There you go. Ah, oh, there you go, very nice. So yeah, some options for the calculator. There's improved progress bar display now on all the applications. So if I do something like uh, installing the Linux kernel update here, which is very frowned upon in Mint, but tough luck, it's a security feature. So, oh, we've got Synaptic already running, my mistake. Let's get rid of that. And there you go, you can see the progress bar. Very nice. Go across to Nemo, across the plugins. So there's some changes you can make here. So these are the right click options. So you can enable or disable various settings here. GNOME Online Accounts are now supported. It's not really something I've used for a long time now. I think I kind of moved away from this when I left Ubuntu behind. We'll get a new selection of desktop wallpapers and there's also been some translation updates. So yeah, quite a few changes have been made to Linux Mint for 18.3. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all later.